Today we'll be reading That Isn't a Ship, It's a Canon with FTL, written by In Babylon They Wept. Agrothron's gut was a grotesque thing to behold, soft and distended, covered with a coarse layering of fur, a fat purple worm of a scar crossing over its almost spherical circumference. So vicious was that scar that even gazing upon it brought unwanted imagery of the fat, ape-like creature screaming in pain, both arms working as a dam to keep the tidal wave of bloody guts from spilling out of its three-fingered fists. Yet, for all its grotesque horror, he trusted it. That same gut that had almost gotten him killed so many years before had worked hard to save him time and time again. It was what had brought him from mere gang press to quartermaster all the way to captain of his own pirate vessel. And right now, it was telling him to call off the attack. The readings he was getting from the craft ahead made no sense. The crew space was too small, the energy readings were off the charts, and by design, there seemed to be something almost military about it. Yet, as he looked over the hull, he couldn't spot a single weapon. Nothing about it made sense. The crew had enough in the larders to pass on a ship this sturdy, even as ships on either side of him pulled forward, eager to be the first one to raid the craft, he aborted the ram sequence to watch from afar. The crew was disappointed. It had been too long since they'd had a good fight, a solid fight, but they knew better than to second-guess Agril's gut. It had earned its place as the ship's oracle by right of blood, and was to be respected accordingly. There were only four crew aboard the USSN PMAC. Dalton Dial, in charge of weapon systems, Elizabeth Harris, in charge of navigation, and the Pratchett siblings, who worked together to keep the fifth-generation fusion reactor that powered the whole abomination within some semblance of working order. The Pratchett siblings' love of the reactor, which they had affectionately named Sun Sun, was rivaled only by their hatred of the rest of the craft. Elizabeth and Dalton had more mixed feelings on the matter. Elizabeth considered the ship, perhaps, a little ridiculous on paper, but a work of military genius. Whilst Dalton lauded the idea as literally the coming of the Messiah, the only thing I prayed to for my whole adulthood, and the answer to that prayer manifest, just for me, to bring me back to the flock. Their mixed feelings could be explained away just by describing the craft concept. The PMAC was not a ship. It was the largest possible gun that could be attached to an El Kaber drive, with just enough manpower to steer, aim, and maintain the thing for long-term patrols. The prototype Mac that the life support, thrusters, and reactor had been constructed around hadn't even been built with space in mind. It was originally designed as a ground-to-orbit defence weapon. If it wasn't for the capacitor bank, the ship would have needed almost a minute between each shot to get enough power, even with the fifth-generation reactor. Luckily, it could start out each battle with enough charge to fire off a salvo of four before needing to begin recharging for its next launch. It had just such a salvo prepared for the pirate ambush that their military-grade scanners had picked up minutes earlier. Dalton was not taking the delay very well. Uh, with all due respect, ma'am, I've had a lock on a three for almost a minute now. I could just fire and claim I sneezed. The Pratchett's would back me up on this. Right, guys? Emily Pratchett snorted. What is it when the Wicked Master says, with all due respect, he always means fuck you for giving my stupidly giant gun blue balls? Tom Pratchett shrugged. Oh, maybe you'd say less if you weren't so eager to translate to the navigator for him. Elizabeth was slightly amused by the conversation. It was hard to keep things particularly formal whilst on a crew this small. Still, she was waiting for something. She'd gotten permission from the brass to take a new approach to fighting with the ship. They'd proven it could win battles. Now it was time to establish shock and awe. And as it currently stood... Dead men told no tales, so they needed a few more living ones, and as she watched the two pirate ships pull forward, with one hanging back, she knew just who'd lived to pass on this particular legend. 
Agril watched the ships advance on his hood, the blips crossing the thousands of kilometres between them and the strange ship in seconds. For a moment, he felt regret. Was he making a mistake? Was he going to be what led to some upstart in his crew, thinking they could do things better than him? Then the world went mad. The power readings on the strange ship spiked. Hard. He'd thought that the baseline levels were outrageous, but they must have had some sort of absurd capacitor bank to expel that much energy that fast. The twin prongs that made up most the length of the ship gave off some sort of EMP that fried the electronics of the viscera, his sister ship, cutting off their radio traffic. His crew scrambled to find a way to regain contact when, gods of the dead, forgive me of my sins and forget me of my debts, the actual weapon went off. The EMP hadn't been the attack. It had been a side effect. He hadn't seen a weapon because he'd been looking for one on the hull, some kind of guardian laser or a missile pod. He hadn't even conceived that the whole goddamn vehicle could be the weapon. But what kind of weapon would charge up like that? A laser would just fire over a sustained period. What would need a burst like? He stopped mid-thought as it hit him. A railgun. He stopped again as it hit them. The kinetic charge would have had to have been moving at almost 0.8c for it to just ignore the evasive manoeuvres like that. The ferro slug itself wasn't detected by any of their defence measures on board, but the thermal readings of the viscera made every infrared sensor on board scream in horror. Contact with whatever slug had hit it must have reduced the whole thing to plasma. It was almost inconceivable. He was already screaming out the full retreat call when the ship fired twice in rapid succession at the Rictus, which was still recovering from what had happened to its partner. The first shot was dead through the centre. The second hit some target a few dozen metres off to the side. A direct hit on an escape pod. Apparently, the captain had tried to save himself. Even in the mortal terror he felt at that moment, Agril could take a grim satisfaction at that second shot. To leave all the men that followed you to their deaths was an act of cowardice that he could not bear to consider. He would rather die. And now he was going to. Jump was fifteen seconds away, and the console was telling him that the ship was pinged. They knew where he was. They had him in their crosshairs, and they were going to pull the trigger. He traced a finger over the purple scar absentmindedly. This was it. He'd been living on borrowed time since that first wound, and now he was to meet his ancestors. He was ready. Dalton was wincing as he maintained his ping on the ship. He knew that Elizabeth was just doing her job, but even by his admittedly bloodthirsty standards, there was something fucked up about keeping a ship in ping like this. It was like forcing someone to look you in the eyes before you slit their throat. Way too personal for his tastes. Elizabeth was keeping an eye on the craft, making sure no escape pods were jettisoning. Part of her was hoping that some would, but whatever other faults these pirates had, they were loyal to each other at least. As the ultraviolet scanners gave the telltale flare of redshift, she told Dalton to turn off the ping. To say he was relieved was an understatement. In the middle of a firefight, he couldn't question Elizabeth's orders, but for the first time in a long time, He'd been afraid to pull the trigger. Now he didn't have to. He almost slid out of his chair as he asked the question that had been on his mind since the engagement began. Mom, the hell was that? Elizabeth smiled warmly at her very surprised crew, even as her words came out, cold as ice. A message. And that brings us to the end of today's story. If you enjoy the stories we narrate and want to keep listening in, be sure to hit the birds to subscribe.